Okay, welcome to the next video in the systems programming uh, video series. We're continuing with chapter two onto section eight about IO in C. This is in the textbook uh, Dive Into Systems. We've already seen at least once before that we use uh, STDIO, which is standard in out. That's really a combination of standard out and standard in, but uh, we don't really have any reason to split them apart, so we'll always use the standard I.O. I think this is, uh, well, I guess some of this is not entirely review. So one thing that you can see is that if you, let's say you wrote a uh, program, you compile it, you build the binary, and it's, let's say, in the file a.out. And let's say that rather than taking your input from you know, say like the, the, the default, which would be using like the scanf uh, uh, function, and you're getting the keyboard input at the terminal. You know, what if you wanted to get your inputs from a text file? Well, you could run your program and uh, use this sort of, you know, left uh, arrowhead after the name of the file that you want it to be reading from. And then, uh, you know, in any case where, you know, you'd see some text followed by a line break that would be treated like uh, as if it had been entered at the terminal and then the user pressed enter to submit the input. So, uh, so you can basically pull your input from a file and you can direct your output, right? So, so any call to print F instead of printing to the terminal would instead print to this text file. There's also, right, but that's only the print F uh, commands. So uh, what if you also wanted say uh, error reporting, which by default goes to the console, but what if you instead wanted it to go to a text file, then you could put that and then everything, both printf and standard error go to this text file and so on. So the right, I think, um, you know, is, is there much that we really want to talk about here or is this all review? So we're looking at using the printf function with these various placeholders. I think we've covered this enough. Oh, you can get spe specific amounts of uh, decimal places in your uh, printf commands. Okay, this looks like a bunch of review of things that I think we've already seen from scanf, so I'm not sure, again, that we really want to talk too much about this. There's also the get char put char, so that is getting and, you know, writing uh, one character at a time, which sometimes you may want. Uh, that can, yeah, I think in the exercise to come, you'll see where, you know, calling, I think it's, uh, yeah, scanf, can be a bit dangerous if the user enters something other than what you intend for the user to enter. You know, scanf, you know, in effect, just grabs the whole thing and uh, d dumps it into a uh, string variable that you have set up. You know, basically, what if they entered more text than you designed it to carry? Well, now you're going to be writing into a variable that is receiving more text than it was designed to receive and you can cause errors that way. So, and, and like, you know, how do you check against this? It's not very easy. So using get char, right, that allows you to read a single character at a time. And so it is a little bit more tedious to try to uh, process the inputs that way, but it is safer. So anyway. Okay, so that's that. Uh, now we're gonna get into file IO. So, um, right, so uh, here we can uh, declare a type and this uh, type comes from, I believe it is uh, standard IO. So because of standard IO, you can use this, this file type and uh, it, here, you know, as, as is a typical use case, we don't really want to, uh, you know, immediately have the file object. Rather, we want a pointer to the file so that we can, you know, do all kinds of manipulation of that object. And so that's what f open returns. So it'll go to the current working directory. You specify that this is a read open uh, command as opposed to a write or an append. And what it gives you back is the address of a file object. As always, you want to check for null. 
You can also open a write object, which typically is going to be uh, some, well, maybe typically or maybe not, but it's uh, a, you know, path to a file that, you know, often does not exist, or it may exist and you want to write over it. But either way, if it doesn't exist, it will create it. And if it does exist, it will write over the existing file. But again, you check for null. You can, uh, let's see, uh, you know, uh, do we want to find some instances of actually using these things in practice? So we declare a char variable. We get the char from the input file. So it's going to just get the immediate uh, char. And if it's the end of file, right, by the way, EOF is a char object that is specially coded to mark the end of a file. So basically it acts as a signal for when you've reached the end. But so, uh, so if it's not the end of file, then we put it into our output file. And so we have read one char from the input and checked it against being the end of file. So long as it is not the end of file, then we write it to the output file. Now, just as with uh, things that you malloc uh, need to be freed and variables nulled uh, by the end of your program, if you open a file, then by the end of the program, you want to close that file. Uh, if you ever make a pass through the file, but you, you know, need to go back to the start, like maybe there's some kind of pre-processing of the file, but once you've done your pre-processing, then you go back to the top and do something else. Well, there's this rewind uh, function. And so once rewind is called, right, so this is just the, you know, the, like, declaration. It's telling you that it returns nothing. Its name is rewind. It receives a file pointer, but this is actually calling it on some file pointer. And so after you have called it, then you can, you know, like it, it basically is reset to the top of the file. And there is this function fseek, which allows you to skip over portions of the file to, you know, go here, go there within the file. So well, maybe we'll see that use in some exercises. If not, uh, you know, I think you know, uh, it's not too hard to figure out how those things work. So, okay. So here it's gonna give some details about several of the functions that are found in standard IO. We've talked, I think, about a, a few of them, I, I think, but I don't know, the, a lot of them, I think the descriptions are fairly straightforward. There's this F print F, so like, you know, if you don't, like what we saw earlier is that you could, from the command line, redirect standard in to write to a file. That's nice, but what if you don't want to do that, right? What if you don't want to control that at the command line, but you still want to take certain things, you know, like, let's say, you still want to be able to print to the console, because that's just generally useful, but, you know, sometimes you want to do that, and then other times, you want to write to a file. Well, then you don't want just standard I.O. completely redirected into a file. Rather, you would like to have your usual standard I.O. directed to the terminal. And then with this different command, you can write to files. So fprintf, right, you basically give it a pointer to the file. You give it a format string, possibly other arguments depending on what that format string is. And every time you call this, it will insert this stuff to the end of the file, so, okay. Again, there seems to be, you know, some descriptions of various things that either we've already talked about or, uh, you know, just reading the textbook, I think uh, you figure out what it's talking about. So, so I don't need to belabor these points. Um, and okay.